Hi, everyone. Welcome to Token 2049 live in Singapore. This is Josh Greer, your host for the Edge of Show. And it, things just got started. It's already rocking. And I'm here with Alice Katz, the co founder and CEO of Kerberos. It's part of a media partnership with Input PR. We're doing a great event actually uh, tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. And for those of you that don't know Alice's background, uh, and Kubernetes' background, it's a Web3 security platform focused on protecting users in real time. So we'll get into that detail a little bit more. I guess the first question is, what brings you to this event other than it's the biggest in our industry? Um, what are you guys up to right now? So Token is definitely the biggest event. So I've been here every year since, uh, since 2022. And what we're doing here is we are actually doing our first uh, initiative uh, in, in real life outside of crypto and online, where we branded all the gates in Token 2049, uh, access secured on-chain and on-site. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that's what we're doing. Very cool. So you guys boost a record of zero user losses in more than two years. Um, I mean... That's incredible, uh, given the importance of trust and safety in our industry and how the hacks actually are just getting exponentially more and more, right? Uh, not not reducing. So I'm curious, no. what's, what's the secret sauce to the philosophy that's made this possible in your mind? Because it feels like it's more than just the tactical aspects of the business. It's, it has to be a cultural uh, choice in a way to, to be so vigilant. Yes, the, the, the reason, and by the way, we have been doubted since the beginning, since every claim we made, people said, no, you're, you're just marketing, but two plus years show that we, we've never been lying. Our approach to security comes from deep, deep expertise in web to cybersecurity, close to 20 years. That's from my co-founder, Danor Cohen. And we created security technology that doesn't exist anywhere. It doesn't exist in web two. It doesn't exist in web three. It's pure to us. And it's so reliable that it allows us to have zero user losses in over two years. And the other approach that we have that is a little bit different uh, for crypto and for other companies is that we don't disclose what we do. We are fully closed source. I know people are thinking, oh, you need to be open source, transparency crypto. But if you are transparent in security, you just give the keys to the attackers. And this is happening too often in crypto. We've never said how we do what we do for that reason. Is there a cultural component too in terms of the people you hire and the mindset of, of your employees? Definitely, um, but it comes straight from leadership, from us too. We are two co-founders. Uh, we, we know how we want things done and we do them in, in that way. We don't have any VC funding or VC interests uh, or any direction that we need to go because someone else is asking us. Our direction is we create things that work and protect users in the way that we know it protects them, which is almost flawlessly. So one of the big things that you talked about already and you guys emphasize is real-time protection. Uh, I guess tell me a little bit more about why you do that versus relying on audits or, or postmortems and what does it actually mean in practice? What it means is that the, the old way of security before the, before the last cycle was blacklists, meaning people just put something into a list and say, oh, this is dangerous. But the problem is that most people that are affected is like the first five minutes or the first hour. Uh, in our case, we don't look at any external source. It's all our technology and it's our technology in real time. So whenever the user goes to a website that is designed or hacked to steal from them, we analyze in real time and we know with 99.9% .9 certainty what it is and that's how we keep them protected and it's always in real time never looking at outside sources or outside data that it doesn't happen in that moment nice and you mentioned sort of your um you know presence here at token uh my understanding is that the the sign uh at the entry says access secured on chain and on site what does that mean to you it's a, it's a metaphor for what we do. We, we've been securing on-chain uh, over 250,000 users for over three years. Uh, and now we're starting to, to get out there and go in, in real life to conferences. This is just the first of many that we're going to do. And uh, that's why we are on-chain and on-site. You'll see all the, all the entrance of Token 2049 out like in before you get in and when you get in and the tables all branded as us because that's what we provide for the web free space. I love that. I, I do a lot of events and I think experiential branding um, 
thinking about things more intentionally with what message you're trying to convey. That's how to how to do things. So um, hope that brings you a lot of uh, new build brand awareness. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the aspects of security that's not just tactical. Um, how do you design systems that not only block threats, but also empower users to feel a sense of trust? It's a good question, and I'm afraid I have to give you a boring answer, but I hope you'll stick with me. The, the biggest issue in security is actually not detection. Like you might think, oh, it's very hard to detect. Detecting is quite simple in a way, it's easy. The biggest issue is what is called a false positive. If you, hell, if you heard about the, the tale of the wolf, like the kid that says the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming, and it never comes, and then it comes and everyone gets eaten. So if your product produces many of these results that, pe that you are warning people against things that are not real, people stop trusting the product, and then people lose funds. Sure. This is what's happening in general with crypto companies in security, except us. Uh, and we have an approach that takes a little bit longer time to get to where we want to get. And we don't, we don't create um, software or security that is half-assed because we know that the moment that we create something that doesn't work nearly perfectly, we undermine the people's trust and then they don't trust us and then they lose funds. So, yeah. So as we're looking at the future, we got quantum technology a lot of new types of security threats. What's your vision on how real-time security in your sort of mission will evolve? Um, quantum is still a long ways. Uh, I, I wouldn't fear quantum too much. Uh, but in terms of our mission and how we do things, we just need to scale into more verticals that we are not protecting users against. And we need to keep them safe from everything. Right now, the, the last thing we did is we added a coverage. So if you use our software, you're covered up to $30,000. So even if we do make a mistake and, and the software doesn't work as it should, which can happen, you're still covered up, up until $30,000. So your a portfolio up to $30,000 is covered. And we need to broaden this into every aspect of crypto. That's the only way we'll get mass adoption. Right on. Uh, if folks want to learn more about Kerberos um, and send out what you guys do, where should they go? They should go to Kerberos.com, and we're also Kerberos on X uh, and Kerberos on LinkedIn. You'll find us in every social. And are you on X as well? I'm on X. I'm Metro Cats, K-A-T-Z. All right. Where where's that come from, Metro Cats? Metro is my longtime nickname, and Cats is my last name. All right. Cool. Well, uh, great to meet you, Metro, and um, you know, hope this is a good week for you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Let's, uh, we'll have some fun, some whiskey and cigars in a couple days. Definitely. All right. We've reached the outer limit at the edge of show for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We have room for more adventurers on our starship, so invite your friends and cool strangers to join our journey. If you're among the hundreds of thousands following us on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or watching us on Myco or YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, rate us, and make an awesome comment too. And don't forget to pass this episode along to a friend or two who would benefit from it. Doubling back to again, recommend checking out myco.io, where you can watch The Edge of Show and earn for your time and attention. That's myco.io. Don't forget to visit theedgeofshow.com. The is part of the domain name where you can learn more about collaborating with us and also subscribe to the Edge of Weekly newsletter for the latest Web3 news, events, and show drops. In addition, connect with us on all major social platforms by searching for The Edge of Show. Join the exciting conversations happening online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great Web3 and AI content. Until then, keep pushing the boundaries. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. The views and opinions expressed on The Edge of Show reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of these links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.